Hey everyone, in this video we're going to talk about how you can use your WordPress instance as like a headless CMS for a custom, well, Next.js front-end in this case, but you may use a different framework like React Vite or some other full stack framework and the fundamentals will stay the same. And those are that you can pull in data into your app using the WordPress REST API that comes with WordPress by default, but they actually also have a GraphQL option if you prefer that. So in this video, I quickly want to go over how you can do that, some tips and tricks show you that, that it's a very realistic option and, and I think it can be really helpful because maybe you are already familiar with WordPress or you have clients that want to stick to WordPress because they're already familiar with it and so you may simply want to use WordPress but you may want to use a more new shiny framework for the front end and that is totally doable and I'll explain how it works with uh, caching as well right so in Next.js we have a bunch of caching so what you see here is actually a Next.js application that has data here and that is coming from a separate WordPress instance. So how can we do that? Let's actually start from scratch, right? So I'm just gonna ignore the styling in this video. You can style it like a blog or whatever your use case has. The essential thing is how can we get the data into the Next.js app and how do we deal with caching like SSG and uh, revalidation and ISR. I'll explain what those are. All right, so let's jump into it. So I have a completely new folder here. I have no app in here. I'm just going to create a new Next.js app, brand new Next.js 16 as of recording. All right, and let me actually run the dev server as well and let's open it up. All right, so here we have the standard Next.js boilerplate. Let me remove this boilerplate here so we just have an empty page. So I will just say hello here. All right, so now you can see I have one page here, the home page, and it's just displaying hello text. But we want to display, let's say, posts from our WordPress instance. Now we will need some WordPress instance. I'm going to use Cloudways in this video. Yes, they're also today's sponsor, but I had a great time using them. And as a recording, they actually have a great sale going on. So check out the link in the description and make sure to use my coupon code, which I will display here to get an even better price. So if you want to follow along, go ahead and create a WordPress instance here with Cloudways, really powerful hosting platform. And let me actually show you that. So I will go ahead and go here into the dashboard. The way it works is that we can buy a server and you can have multiple applications on one server, but by default, we can get started with one application. You can see it's optimized for all sorts of PHP applications. I will just go with a default WordPress installation here. I can just say first app, first server. For the application stack, they actually have a lightning stack now which can be faster. And then we can pick the provider for the server. So Cloudways is actually a digital ocean company, but they allow you to pick from these other providers as well, in case you do prefer that. We can pick the server type and we can pick how powerful it should be. And then we can pick the location. I recommend that you pick the location that is the closest to your actual users, not yourself, your actual users. And then you can click on launch. All right, so after a few minutes, it's good to go. We get we have all the settings here for the server itself, but we wanna see the actual applications on the servers. So here you can see the actual details, including access to the admin panel. And actually let's go to the admin panel right here. I have my credentials right here, automatically generated here by Cloudways, and I will log in right here. All right, here we go. Here we have our admin panel, and here we have our site, it's just a standard boilerplate. If I go to posts now, you can see by default there is this hello world post. Let's just add another post here so we have two. I will call that second post. This is the second post. I will go ahead and publish that. Cool, so now if I go there on the front end that you get out of the box with WordPress, uh, this is what we see. Now, of course, we wanna have our own custom front end with Next.js in this case. So how do we get these posts into our Next.js app? Well, by default, actually, you get a REST API. So if you use the URL for your site, this is the one I got from Cloudways. And then if you tack on this bit here, and if I go there, I actually have a bunch of data here. This is in so-called JSON format. I can click on preprint here to format it nicely. Now what I see here are actually those posts that we have. So you can see this piece here is one post, right? So here you can see title is second post. It has an ID. And if we scroll down a little bit and here we can see the content, right? The actual, this is the second post. We also see a slug here. So if you're building a blog and you wanna have a slug in the URL, you can use this. So this is all the data about that one post. And then if I scroll down, there is another post here with a different slug and with its own data as well. So there are two posts here. Now, by the way, there's also an option here for pages instead of posts. 
so maybe that is something that you want to use but in this video we'll focus just on these posts here so of course i can go here directly in the url but how do we get this in the in my app here right here now, i should mention there are also plugins to use graphql instead of the rest api however in this video we'll just use this okay so now how do i get that data into my actual next.js app well here in the page component i can just make a fetch call right this is a server component we can fetch data directly in here and we just have to use that url that we just used in the url address bar so it's my Cloudways URL, and then it's that piece at the end. I'm just parsing that, and that is JSON data. So I'm parsing that here, and then I'm just logging it here, not displaying it on the page yet. Now, when I do that, you will see the, you, you can see here the log here in my terminal because it runs on the server, right, server component. But you can see we get the same data here that we just saw in the browser as well. So now we can just display that here on the page, All right? So I can have like an H1 and then just map over each of these posts. Now, if I go to my homepage, you can see I have blog post and then I have second post. And let me actually show it like this. So you can see now I have second post. That's the post.title.rendered. And then we are also displaying the content, right? This is the second post. And then we have the other post with this title and content. And let me actually remove the H1. So we just have those posts. And let me actually add a border to the bottom of each post here. Right, so now I've been able to get data from my WordPress instance, basically use it as like a headless WordPress. Right, so now I can manage my content from this dashboard, pull it into my Next.js app. So if I make a change here and I add a bunch of exclamation marks and I save here, so post updated. All right, now when you make a change and you don't see it reflected in the app, there may actually be an issue with caching. We'll talk more about this later, but basically there is caching at the Next.js app level. That's actually not the issue that I ran into. There's also caching at the WordPress instance level, right? So typically this is actually really beneficial because, right, because it's gonna be much faster. So we, we typically do want it. However, we may just wanna exclude the API URL from that caching, right? So here I have the Breeze plugin. I can exclude a URL. So everything here with WordPress JSON, I'm just gonna exclude from here so that if I make a change here and if I save here, and now if I refresh, you can see it's updated here. There are a couple of tricks, by the way, that we can do with the URL as well. So I can add this underscore embed here. And if I then log the data that we get, it will actually give you additional information that you perhaps would have had to make an additional request for. It comes now included as part of this payload, for example, an image URL or author information. You can also specify the exact fields that you want. So if I do this, I only get the ID slug title and the content here this may reduce the payload as well as the speed now if you have many posts and you have like pagination there are some settings for that here as well and actually if you have a search functionality there is actually a built-in search feature here as well so you can see if i'm searching for the word second it only gives me that post that keyword so the second post in this case you can also specify the order by so if you want to have it sorted in a particular that is possible and there are also options for filtering so for example only the posts in a particular category or with a certain tag all right now if you're building a blog we can use that built-in slug property so we can just use the next as link component and then uh, make it slash posts slash the slug so instead of displaying the content here we're going to put it on its own page so i've created a new page here in xjs you can do it with route with square brackets so then when you click on one of them the slug will be in here in the url so we need to grab the slug from the url we can do that with params we can get we can get the slug like this and then we need to fetch the that individual posts data so we can do that with slug is and then the slug from the url and so then we can render its title and contents very similarly right just like before but now it's on its own page so now if i go to this one you can see i get the data just for that one post all right now what about caching everyone's favorite topic uh, so the, we just saw that there is actually already a cache at the server level so the wordpress instance depending on where you host it and some settings may already have some cache so if you're still prototyping or developing your app it's typically best i think to exclude it from the cache or have like separate environments but basically as you saw on the server level i excluded the wordpress api url from any caching now of course we do want to have some cache caching at the Next.js level. Now at the Next.js level, how it, does it work here with caching? If I run a build, you will see some information about the pages, right? So you can see the home page is statically rendered, right? So during the build, the HTML for that route is created and that will just be cached on a CDN, right? So it's gonna be very fast. But what happens if you do add another post in your WordPress instance? That homepage does need to be, well, recreated, you could say. 
right? So because then there's a new post, so we need to create a new list here, a new, a new page with a new list. So Next.js has some options that we can use. So I can specify a revalidate here, it should be 60 seconds. So this, so basically one minute. So this means that this page will be uh, cached for one minute. So if you quickly add another post in WordPress, it's not immediately recreated, but after a minute or so, it will be recreated with the latest post. So you will have a little bit of time where it's out of date, but with a blog like this, that doesn't really matter. So you can specify that here, or in this case, I can actually also specify it here in the fetch. I can say next revalidate in 60 seconds. So then it also knows that this page needs to be regenerated after a uh, every minute or so right but if i run a build now and so now if i run a build you can see the page is still static right so it's it's still going to be very fast right but at some point we will have new data so it needs to be fresh again so it will be revalidated every one minute and so this is like isr incremental static regeneration and so with this revalidate option we basically accept there's going to be a small you know period of time where it may be out of date if you want it to be immediately updated when you make a change we could create an API endpoint, a route handler, and then you need to send a webhook to your Next.js app. And in that webhook, you can call revalidate path to trigger recreation of that page. But for a blog, this typically makes more sense. Now, what about this other page? This is a dynamic page. So during the build, there is no caching. So the reason it's dynamic is because Next.js during build time does not know all the possible slugs that there could be. So it doesn't know for which slugs it needs to generate this page, right? Because this page depends on that. There is a generate static params function here, and we can then specify for all possible slugs for which we wanna generate a page during the build. So I can actually just fetch just the slugs of my posts in my WordPress. And that's what I'm gonna return here. So basically an array of slugs. So then, if I run another build, you can see now it has statically generated two pages here, thanks to this option that you have as well. So this function runs only during build time, so I don't want to add caching here, but I could specify the revalidate here as well. So if I change the title or something else about this blog post, this is reflected at some point in my application as well. But if the caching is not completely clear to you, that's totally fine. It's one of the most complex topics in Next.js. I will have a new video soon that will give you a good explanation. Now, in the meantime, if you want to spin up a WordPress instance, I highly recommend you check out Cloudways with the link in the description and use my coupon code. All right, so really powerful platform. I just have one application on my server right now but i could have multiple applications not just wordpress if you're in if you if you have a php application or laravel something like that you can host that on that server they also have an autonomous option here with auto scaling as well it's built on kubernetes so if you're looking for a scalable wordpress hosting solution check out cloudways in any case i hope this helps you out thank you for watching and i hope to see you in the next one bye